guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. As I'm sure you guys have probably noticed, I haven't done any videos for a couple days. Had a family situation come out of nowhere, as these things usually do. Had to take care of that, but uh, everything's cool, so now I'm back on track. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. A very, very entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. It's from a guy, he is 54 years old. He is the father of a 22-year-old who's a big fan of the channel who shares his story about events that happened back in the 90s, probably at least 25 years ago or longer, about ex of his before he got married. This is about a gal who he was with for a number of years, thought he was going to marry, and then when he approached the question or they were discussing it, all of a sudden she decided she wanted to take a break so she could go see other people and explore things. Translation, that was a 90s version of an open relationship. And you're going to see, guys, how this guy handles it. He handles it like a boss. It's hilarious because this guy definitely has a good sense of humor. And I'll be very entertain both an entertaining one to go over that you would all enjoy, but also very important lessons in the story, as always. Like, number one, gal brings up an open relationship, open marriage, or take a break, which basically means in one form or another to go hook up with other people, end it. It's over. Also, it's usually because either she has somebody in mind or she's cheating with somebody else. Number two, as I always say, pay attention who your girl hangs out with. Her friends will have a tremendous influence on her, especially if she's a follower and can't really think for herself. And let's be honest, two-thirds of the population at minimum are followers, so you know, be, be aware of that. Third one is how the gal's always come back no matter what you can count on it may take 20 years but they always come back fourth don't mess with a military guy a military guy that was raised old school definitely very important to remember so he says dear ssm my son 22 years old is a huge fan of yours and he's been bugging me for a year to tell you about the open relationship of my youth since it was back in the 90s we will call them breaks but they were the same BS. Yeah, pretty much. Breaks were either, let's take a break and we'll be together, but we're going to just work on some things and not see other people, which some people did that. Or two, it was, let's take a break. We're not going to see each other, but we're going to see other people, but I'm going to keep you in layaway. He thinks your listeners can learn a thing or two from a 54-year-old cantankerous Gen Z bastard. So here it goes. First off, I was taught to be a man by real men. Many of my high school teachers were World War II veterans. Two had even stormed Normandy. My own father served in Korea. They were all straight shooters. They would fight Satan himself to protect you and live by example. He says, take note, youngins. Talk is cheap. Actions are all that count. Yes. And brother, trust me, I know. I was raised also by a World War II guy. My father was a Marine, a, a pilot in the Pacific in World War II. Now, some of you guys are like, SSM, how's that possible? You're 45. I'm from my dad's second marriage. My dad was born in 1922. My mom wasn't born in 1945. So he was 23 years old, older than my mom. After World War II, like many guys, he rushed off and got married. He, he got the GI Bill to go to medical school, but also got married and started having kids while in medical school. And ultimately, he ended up having five kids. Talk about a stereotype, the baby boomers. And then, obviously, the marriage went to hell in a handbasket and he divorced her. And they met my mom years later. And on their first date, he was 44 and she was 21. And uh, anyhow... So I was, I was the uh, first, first born of the next marriage. And given that he grew up in a depression, fought in World War II of that generation, he was tough. No bullshit. Which was both a curse and a blessing. It was a curse because he was a hard ass growing up. All my friends' dads were much younger than him. And they were obviously, their way of raising kids was different than a guy who grew up in the depression in World War II. And so it was tough. However, the blessing was, he didn't take any shit and he raised me right, old school way, and he was a great guy. And once he realized that, uh, okay, I've done my job, he's grown up, then we became best friends for life. It was awesome. May he rest in peace. I know I'm going off track here, but a lot of you guys wonder about my past. But I understand about the uh, old school guys. It says here, uh, second, like many of my friends, 
I joined the military right out of high school. I chose the Navy so I could see the world. Thank you for your service, brother. I completed two Westpac deployments, Asia, Australia, Polynesia, etc. When I got to college, I was older than the other students, so campus parties didn't interest me. He says, especially after Thailand and the Philippines. Frat parties looked like kindergarten class. I can imagine. I focused on my studies and spent my free time in the library. That's how I met Chloe. At the time, I was 24 years old and she was 21. She was a student worker. We got to know each other and she seemed to enjoy my stories of Asia. She didn't have a lot of relationship miles on her, aka not the campus bicycle, so we started dating. Things were good. Okay. So far, so good. In the beginning, things were always good. And that's nice. He had a gal that um, didn't have a lot of relationship miles, if you will. Uh, fast forward until I'm 20 years old and she's 25. We've been living together for about a year and a half, talking more and more about marriage. She was fine with that. Fine? Were those her? Was that her word? Fine? Because when women say fine, usually it's not fine. But when I started talking about kids, I know something off with her. I asked her what was going on, and she said, I don't know. When they, when they say they don't know, they know. <clears throat> Not long after, she asked me to sit down for a serious talk. What she said destroyed my view of her. She said that all this talk of marriage and kids made her realize she hasn't really lived yet. Not like me since I saw the world. Okay, I thought she wanted to take a trip overseas or something. Nope. Gee, for you guys that watch this channel often, what do you think she'd be possibly be talking about, about the whole uh, hasn't really lived yet? Do you think it's about seeing the world? Nope, it's about seeing a whole lot of hot dogs. She wanted to take a break from us. She said it would just be six months and we could see other people. But then afterwards, we could get back together, get married, and have kids. Oh, what a great deal. Sounds good, honey. I'll see you in six months. Bullshit. If she really loved this guy, there's no way she'd want to risk losing him to another woman. And guys, this take a break thing is just another way of an open relationship. It's just that they didn't call it open relationships back then. It's the same thing. Her perception of this guy is, obviously, oh, he'll, I'm so wonderful and he's so in love with me that he'll stick around and wait. Because, yes, this was a gamble on her part in a poker, in a poker play, but still, she, probably, she obviously thought her chances were good. She could keep him in layaway. Well, she was wrong. <clears throat> Says here, I was in shock, so I didn't say anything right away. He says, silence is golden, kids. But I instantly knew two things. Number one, Chloe had a guy lined up that she wanted to screw. And number two, this relationship was over. Yes, exactly. Thank the Lord when I was reading this earlier I, that you're the guy that's going to say, we're done. Instead of one of those guys who would cry and try to negotiate with her and, uh, you know, stayed around and lay away while she hooked up with many Chads and Tyrones. Yeah, definitely. Either they're already hooking up with another guy or they already uh, have somebody in mind. While she talked about how good this break would be for us, I was figuring out a way to get her out of my apartment and out of my life. So I agreed to the break and gave her some requirements. You gave her requirements? Isn't that usually uh, against the rules? Isn't the woman supposed to give the guy the requirements and he obediently follows? Uh, first, first requirement, she had to move out. I told her I'm not sure, I'm not sure she did, she'd want to see the women that I was going to screw. She agreed and said she could move out, move in with an older, divorced female co-worker. He said, yeah, she was the sly who put the idea of a break in Chloe's head. Right there, what I tell you. A divorced co older co-worker, meaning she's pissed off and bitter and alone, and she wants company. And put this idea in her head. Always pay attention to who your girl hangs out with. Second, no calls or visits for the next six months. Chloe didn't like this, but agreed after I said she wouldn't want to hear about all the dates I was going on. I even said she needed to change her mailing address to whatever, wherever she was going to be staying. Wow, what a very clever way of getting her out of your life. And she's so focused on the guy she obviously has in mind, she's not realizing you're completely getting rid of her. 
In those six months, I made a decision to move back home away from the coast where I was home ported in the Navy and had gone to college. Luckily for me, my 10-year high school reunion was coming up. I reconnected with Pam. We were friends in school, but nothing romantic, mostly due to me being an irresponsible a-hole. Well, 10 years changed both of us for the better. She liked how I was no longer an a-hole and had my life together. I liked how her standards her standards for a future husband were not to be an a-hole and have his life together. She finally let me take her out on a date. <clears throat> Pam helped me get phone interviews with companies back then. He says remote interviewing was a big deal before the internet, kids. Long story short, five months into our six-month break, I was back home at a new job for a few weeks and dating Pam. So all this is going on, he picked up and left. He picked up and left, and he hasn't heard from Chloe this whole time. This chick obviously had a guy and was so happy to get away with her chance with the guy. Boom, he's gone, and she doesn't even notice. But watch this. It says here, five months into our six-month break, I was back home at a new job for a few weeks and dating Pam. I had sold or given away most of my stuff before the move. What was left of Chloe's stuff was in storage, and the property manager had the padlock key. Six months to the day of our break, Chloe called me screaming her head off. I asked her how she got my new number. The property manager sold me out. Anyway, she couldn't believe that I would just move away without telling her, giving up on us. Giving up on us? Um, who's the one that proposed this whole take a break thing aka open relationship her and you're the bad guy for taking off really she expected you to just sit around and wait for her that was really her perception she was that confident i mean once she have a magic pussy and she was amazing in bed and all that that you were going to stick around waiting for her get the fuck out of here i told her point blank that there hasn't been an us since she made it clear she wanted to go screw another guy she denied it at first, but eventually admitted that yes, it was all because she found a male coworker hot. There you go. Every time. Hooking up with or already have some guy in mind. Right then and there. And no, she didn't uh, admit it at first. She had to dig it out of her. I told her I hope she has a future with him because she has none with me. She said that they only had SCX and it wasn't love. Oh, okay. That makes everything better now. I got no problem with him piping you down, but as long as you weren't in love with him. I told her it didn't matter. I wished her a happy life, and that was pretty much it. Over the next year, she would periodically call. They always come back. Every call would start with small talk, but eventually it always ended with her wanting another chance. How many of you guys have been in a situation like this? They're relentless. It's like, it's over. That all stopped when Pam answered the phone one day and introduced, her to, introduced herself as my fiancé. They talked for an hour afterwards. I still remember Pam's super sweet southern accent saying, Well, darling, if you kick over a hornet's nest, you ain't gonna get honey. Yes. Pam and I married. Yeah, I've heard all your shit on marriage. It was actually a great thing when both spouses are invested in it. We have a wonderful marriage. It's amazing when both people in a marriage are pulling in the same direction. We have four great kids, including the 22-year-old knucklehead who won't stop talking about your channel. Well, bro, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you have a great marriage. And you know what? To all the guys out there that watch me that have great marriages or great relationships, cool. I'm seriously happy for you. I'm just warning guys about what is the reality of today's world. Not that a lot of BS that happens today didn't happen back in the day, as an example, this story. You know, you get two people, a guy and a gal that are have conservative, traditional uh, ways of doing things from that background, are good people, loving, loyal, all the positive things that people can have, and they come together. I'm all for that, really. The problem is, is that that's very rare nowadays to get two people actually like that together. And of course, the whole other conversation, how the family laws are not really helping guys out. So you put all that shit together, that's why I had my opinion that I do about marriage today in the 2020s. But that being said, you can have two people together and there are old school qualities and actually live up to their vows, awesome. Just gotta be very careful and really, really take your time with a girl, get to know her, build yourself up, 
Don't rush into things. You guys know the drill. Just to make that clear. He says, so that's it. The moral of my story is, when your girlfriend or wife suggests an open relationship or take a break, is just accept that she wants to screw another guy and your relationship is over. Get out and move on with as, with as little damage to yourself as possible, then keep on getting on. Hope this helps. Best regards, Old Bastard John. Well, Old Bastard John, you got a good sense of humor, and I appreciate you taking the time to write your story. And uh, give a shout-out to your, uh, tell your son uh, thank you for recommending the channel. And if you got any other good stories, definitely send them my way in the future, because you have a good way of writing. But anyhow, guys, like I said before, they bring up the open relationship or take a break. It's almost always there's somebody else in mind. You've already been replaced. Or they're hooking up with somebody and they just want permission to cheat. Two, pay attention to who your girl hangs out with. You heard it right there, her, her co-worker who she moved in with. Three, they always come back. And four, don't mess with a old school military guy. It ain't going to end well for you. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, you got a great story like to share? By all means, email me strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. And even if it isn't your story, even if it's a story like this where it's it's a uh, if you're sharing somebody else's story, like a brother or a friend or whatever, that you have their you have their permission, definitely send it my way. It'd be a very good one to cover. Aside from the entertainment factor. You can learn something from every video that can make your life better. It's worth your time for the 15 minutes, 20 minutes to listen to the show. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.